Okay, now we want to talk about how can we unify the fundamental particles such as quarks and leptons and how can we unify the fundamental forces which is the gravity, electromagnetism, strong and weak nuclear forces because that's the ultimate goal in a high energy physics is to come up with one particle that the universe is composed of and then one force that controls the universe and we haven't done it yet but these are some candidates so one possibility for something that would unify all the particles is a superstring it's a vibrating piece of energy and then depending on the frequency at which it vibrates it could be any kind of particle that you want now in order to unify the fundamental forces we need higher temperatures so as we increase the temperature of the universe it turns out that the forces begin to unify and so I'm just going to skip over to here so you should be able to reproduce this chart okay don't worry about the temperatures necessary and don't worry about the times when it happened in the universe but the idea that electromagnetism and then the weak nuclear go together and then that makes uh, the electro weak force and then the idea that the electro weak force and then the strong nuclear force go together at a higher temperature to make gut the grand unified theory and then the idea that gut then combines with gravity at still higher temperatures to make the theory of everything so toe so you need to know that for the exam okay and um, you need to know at what time does toe occur okay so that's that 10 to the negative 44th seconds after the Big Bang so you should know that number for the exam but other other than that you don't need to know the numbers down here and you don't need to know the numbers up here but this explains how we can combine all of the forces of nature together all right uh, the idea of supersymmetry and super partners is not going to be on the exam so you can read about it but it's not going to be on the exam okay and then that's more more of that and so this just shows you how complicated the current state of high energy physics is so that you need to have all of these different kinds of particles in order to explain how the universe works which is very frustrating so we really want to try to simplify this as much as possible all right and, and this is the appendix which shows how the rotational speed of galaxies is related to its mass you're not going to do that on the exam and then um, I think that you should know some of the fundamental constants of the universe so if I said what is C you should be able to tell me well that's the speed of light if I said to you what is big G then you ought to say well that's the gravitational constant it's the one that goes with gravity um, you know, other than that I, I would say that that's pretty good but this these are two of the fundamental constants that control the universe and the only reason why I show this to you is that by combining the fundamental constants we get fundamental quantities in the universe and so for example the fundamental time in the universe is called Planck time and it's this number up here so this is where this number actually comes from 
is by combining some of the fundamental constants of the universe. And there are other fundamental concepts on that chart that you should recognize when we start talking about the formation of the universe. All right, so that takes care of fundamental particles and fundamental forces. So if you will join me in our next segment, we're going to talk about the Big Bang.